Farm, a fishing town nestled amid the rugged bays of Newfoundland's northeastern coast, is a seemingly peaceful place. But beneath the still black waters of majestic Lake Crescent, something is said to live as it has for untold years. I saw the head as it was kind of long featured. There was no waves on either side, it was just a deep swell. It wasn't moving in the water, but it was, it had this tendency to, to be vibrating. The head was like long, pointy. It was dark, it was, it was I'd say about 30 feet long. Witnesses describe a serpentine creature, 20 to 40 feet long, with a snake-like head and featureless body. It most closely resembles an eel, but compared to any known eel, fresh or salt water, this is a monster. Sightings of similar phenomena are reported across Canada, from Lake Okanagan in British Columbia and Lake Manitoba in Manitoba, to Lake Menfromagog in Quebec on the Vermont border. But this is the first scientific investigation into the monster of Lake Crescent. Lake and ocean monsters have a long history. A Swiss naturalist, Conrad Gessner, was the first to try to classify these unknown giants. For two centuries, North American sailors have reported sea serpents all along the eastern seaboard. But the oldest accounts in this area come from stories passed down from the very first native settlers of this continent. If you talk to the Algonquins and you interview them, they talk about serpents. John Castleman, a biologist at Queen's University, Kingston, has investigated these native legends. And you ask them, and you question them, and you think maybe serpents are snakes. But when you talk to them about serpents, they'll tell you that serpents are not snakes. Tales of these unlikely lake monsters have persisted here for centuries. Terrified, Native Americans refer to them as pond devils or swimming demons. What were these tribal members seeing? Is it possible that these stories of the swimming demons can be explained by a giant eel? There are about 600 species of eels in the world. They are fierce carnivores with a notoriously indiscriminate appetite, preferring live fish and large invertebrates. Most eels possess a highly developed sense of smell to track their prey. With their serpent-like heads, slimy bodies, cold beady eyes, and razor-sharp teeth, the eel is a creature reviled and feared by some. Although not common, eels have even been known to attack humans. Castleman is the first to admit that even after a century of research, biologists still know very little about eels. Eels are very interesting and in many ways, many ways very mysterious because we've never seen a spawning eel. They're a very ancient fish. They're among the most ancient fish. The largest and most ferocious of the species are all oceanic eels. And although Castleman doubts the existence of a 30-foot-long eel living in a lake, he cannot say with certainty that it could not occur. And every now and then we hear of, of, of stories of gigantic eels occurring in fresh water. And, uh, and there's some really well-documented observations of these. One of these sightings was by a man who has decades of experience with the native North American eel. I've been fishing since the late 50s. I started with eels, so it kept going from there. And the first thing I knew, I was in the eel fishing business. John Rorabeck is a commercial eel fisherman on Lake Ontario. The fish is considered a delicacy in Europe and Asia. It's a profitable catch. In 1974, Rorabeck was fishing with his father on Lake Ontario and claims that he encountered an eel of gigantic proportions. After a long day fishing for eels, Rorabeck caught sight of a massive shape coming towards him in the water. Well, when it come to me, I was in moss, so all I could see was a big hump coming. So I dropped on top of him like that. I was going to flip him in the boat. As Rorabeck attempted to catch hold of the creature, it reared up and was strong enough to lift the man out of the water. He just hoisted me in the air. He went right on underneath me. He was too big. Rorabeck fought to wrestle with the large, slippery creature. And he turned around and come back. 
and when he came back, I got on him again. This time, with my whole body. But whatever the creature was, it was too strong. He just slid right on through, just shoved me in the air. There's no way was you going to hold that thing. It was monstrous. It's, it, it, to see something like that, it, it's like something you think you're looking at in a movie, you know? The incident left Rorabek shaken. Whatever it was that he encountered that night, he knew that it didn't belong in these waters. It wasn't the North American eel. The only other eel that I know is that any, anywhere near that size is the conger. But conger eels do not inhabit freshwater lakes. They can tip the scales at 200 pounds and have been known to measure over 12 feet in length. They are terrifying and voracious night predators. Locking their incredibly strong jaws onto their prey, they twist and turn their bodies like a screw, ripping away chunks of flesh. And although the conger is exclusively an ocean eel, Rorabek's suggestion may make more sense than it seems. The thing that's unique and interesting about congers is from time to time, we see eels in fresh water that are gigantic eels. These were eels that were two meters, more than two meters long, six, seven feet long, uh, you know, uh, eight, ten inches in diameter, and truly gigantic. 800 miles downriver from where Rorabek had his encounter in Lake Ontario, the island of Newfoundland in eastern Canada guards the entrance to the St. Lawrence estuary. It's here, at Crescent Lake, that locals say the granddaddy of such creatures has been sighted for centuries. Ever since I was a kid, I always, you know, always heard stories. Effie Colborn has lived on the lakeside for more than 32 years. She says many of the older generation told of something menacing in the lake. I believed it because all the older folks were reliable people. At certain times, they would see, okay, they'd have a sighting of, they called it a monster, so. There have been numerous sightings here over the past 100 years, and the legendary stories from Lake Crescent continue to emerge. One such account from the 1980s told of Royal Canadian Mounted Police divers searching for the corpse of a drowning victim. As the scuba divers braved the murky waters, they found themselves surrounded by a school of vicious eels said to be as thick as a man's thigh. The massive creatures then attacked the divers who quickly swam to the surface to escape. There's a problem with the story. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police have no record of such an attack. Still, many legends bear a kernel of truth. In this case, it's the sightings that date back to ancient times. Even so, this man is skeptical of the existence of Cressy, the nickname given to the monster by locals. It's not likely that there's something unknown to science in these waters. After years spent investigating the lake monsters of North America, author and researcher Joe Nickel believes that Lake Crescent's monster is more local legend than scientific fact. He believes it's self-perpetuating. Someone sees something and they tell a story and pretty soon it's almost a badge of honor if you've seen it. Nickel will offer up his own explanations and will perform an experiment to test whether the sightings can be explained away as mere optical illusion. 20 to 30. Meanwhile, a forensic sketch artist will produce the first images of the lake monster and analyze the startling consistency between the many witness sightings. If a professional sketch reveals that different people are seeing the same details, it could suggest that what they are seeing is very real. An eel, three times longer than the largest documented specimen, lurking in the waters of Lake Crescent. Waters that marine biologist Richard Haydrich will search employing traps, sonar, divers, and submersible technology. Most of my experience is, is working in the ocean and particularly in the deep sea. I'm a firm believer that there's plenty out there that, uh, that we don't, don't know about. Now, Richard Haydrich is determined to find what would be the greatest discovery of his career, a monster eel. There's crowding this lake and there's salmon. And there's what we call salmon peel, you know. Yeah, but there are, but there are eels. Oh, yeah, there's eels there, yeah. Honey eels there. Local fisherman and expedition pilot Alwyn Rideout has lived on the shores of this lake his whole life. Mm 
when you hear stories like this, and particularly ones that go back a, a long ways, they they have their foundation in something. So that the idea that that something could could be in here of of large size and quite mysterious is uh, is not at all surprising. The local topography suggests an extremely deep body of water. Lake Crescent is nearly as mysterious as the monster that locals say inhabit it. Although there are no depths indicated in the lake, people have told us that it's virtually bottomless. Will Lake Crescent finally give up its darkest secret? What is that thing? Can you tell it? You saw it, didn't you? The people of Robert's Arm in eastern Canada claim to have seen an extraordinary and terrifying beast rumored to be over 20 feet long. I think people think you're crazy. <laughs> if I am, I still saw it. <laughs> Effie Colborn is not the only witness. In the past two decades, there have been at least a dozen sightings. I was just uh, appalled at, at what I saw. <laughs> My wife and I were, were driving, and uh, I, I've got a tendency to, to always look in the lake. What Fred Parsons saw in July 1991 was astonishing. Lo and behold, there was the creature just laying on the water. So that's when I backed up and uh, I don't know, I, I would say I observed it for 30 to 40 seconds. I was shocked, I was dumbfounded, I, I, I just couldn't believe it, you know. It wasn't moving in the water, but it was, it had this tendency to, to be vibrating. And consequently, there was a number of low profile waves and ripples emanating from its body all around. I mean, I estimated it to be between 15 and 20 feet long. I'm convinced that what I saw was uh, some kind of a giant eel. That's the way I'd describe it. The Lake Crescent eyewitnesses are about to undergo their first real test. If you see a creature like this in the lake, your emotion will be quite high. So you will store that information in the that very, very special place in your, in your brain. Michel Fournier, a forensic sketch artist, is more used to working with victims of crimes. But for him, the principle is exactly the same. Due to a lack of photographic evidence, Fournier will sketch the monster based on detailed recollections of witnesses. You need to enter somebody else's mind and extract that information. But first of all, you need to establish if that person is telling the truth. So there was those small waves emanating from all around his body. That thing is not moving. Not 